What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic and you guys asked for it. So today we're gonna to be talking about the best budget mesh wireless routers. So today with me, I had the TP-Link Deco X20, Asus Zen Wi-Fi XD4, Netgear Nighthawk MK62, Eero 6, and Linksys MR7350. Now, as you can see, we have a mixture of both two pack and three pack systems, but all of them are priced under $300. Now, I know a lot of you may not consider $300 to be a budget option, but most of these are available in a one or two pack for less money, so you can spend even less if you need to. And if you're wondering why I chose these mesh systems, it's because they're really easy to set up and use, and they can cover a really large area or help with dead zones or trouble spots you might have in your home. Now, most manufacturers offer different levels of speed and capacity. This means the more expensive systems like AX4200, AX6000, and so on, usually work better if you have a ton of devices, but if you don't have a lot of high-speed devices, you can grab one of these budget systems and save your coins. And just like the two other Wi-Fi videos I did earlier this year, all of these units are gonna be Wi-Fi 6. So if you're interested in one of the older Wi-Fi 5 routers, you can check out the videos I did last year and compare. And I know some of you are probably gonna ask about Wi-Fi 6E, which we've started to see pop up, and I will have a video coming up real soon of my first Wi-Fi 6E router, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on that. All right, so just like my previous Wi-Fi videos, I'll go down the list from the most expensive down to the least expensive with an overview of each system, then I'll combine all of the results at the end of the video, give you my thoughts, and tell you which ones are the best. Now, there will be two categories in this video, one for best value and the other for fastest speed. And my testing methods for this video were also the same as previous videos. I put all of the routers and mesh units in the same place, and I have five different testing locations around the house where I ran a minimum of six speed tests per location. I used my own speed test server to avoid unreliable external site results, and the devices that I used for my test were the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra for Wi-Fi 6 and the Galaxy S9 Plus for Wi-Fi 5. All right, let's jump right into it. So first up on the list as our most expensive unit is the Linksys MR7350, which retails for $300 for two units. So Linksys doesn't actually make a budget mesh wireless kit for less than $300. So what I did was buy two MR7350s priced at 150 bucks a piece for a total of $300, since they are technically still mesh compatible. And at the time of this video, the MR7350 actually went on sale for 99 bucks. So Linksys is no stranger to the wireless router market being one of the most popular brands in the early and mid 2000s. They have some of the most traditional looking designs as you can see with the MR7350, as well as the MR9600 I compared in this year's best gaming router video. So having a more traditional design, the Linksys has the most ports since it has four LAN ports on each unit for a total of eight ports if you get two of them. And setting up the Linksys was incredibly easy and even adding the second unit was a piece of cake using the Linksys app. So these units support both wireless mesh or they can be wired directly together for a wired backhaul, which is generally much faster than a wireless connection. And when it comes to performance, I have to say I was really surprised by the Linksys. It had great speeds at 10 feet and performed really well overall. It also had the best range, which is probably due to it being the only router on this list that has external antennas. The only thing I found to be lacking were the speeds from the mesh unit since I couldn't quite break 200 megs. Overall, I like the Linksys, and if you don't really need a mesh system, it will work really great as a single router considering its coverage. All right, second on the list, which retails for 300 bucks, is the Netgear Nighthawk MK62. So this is a two-pack system that often goes on sale for 230 bucks or less, making it a much cheaper alternative to its bigger brother, the Netgear Orbi. So the MK62 units have a unique and interesting square design with a triangular pattern on top. The main router has two gigabit ports, including a WAN port and LAN port, and the satellite mesh unit has a single LAN port. The LAN ports can be used to wire the units together directly for the best performance, which is known as a wired backhaul, or the ports can be used to connect your wired devices. 
Setting up the Netgear as well as pretty much all the other systems on this list was really easy using the app. Just follow the instructions on the screen in the Nighthawk app and you'll be up in just a few minutes. My only gripe was that I couldn't figure out how to split the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz channels, which is helpful for some older devices. Now, when it comes to performance, the Netgear had pretty good speeds and was certainly among the fastest. It also provided the fastest speeds in my basement, which is commonly a trouble spot for most routers. Now on the flip side, it provided some of the lowest speed numbers out in my driveway. It also didn't like me walking around the house and the speeds would sometimes drop drastically until I disconnected and reconnected. But overall, the Netgear produced some really good speeds and isn't a bad system as long as you don't have a massive home. Next up, priced at 280 bucks is the Aero 6 3-pack mesh system. Now, I actually have the 2-pack system with me here that costs 200 bucks, but in this video, I'm focused on getting the most units you can get for less than 300, so for the sake of cost, we're gonna be talking about the 3-pack system. So Aero has made a name for itself being one of the easiest systems to set up and use while providing great wireless coverage with decent speeds. Now, even though it doesn't have a lot of the advanced features, it does have one of the best apps with the most intuitive interface. And one of the most unique features about the Eero is that it actually has a Zigbee smart home hub built right into it. This means you can use it to control smart home devices like smart light bulbs and wall outlets without the need to buy another hub. As far as performance goes, I have to say I was really surprised by the speeds from the Aero. Normally, Aero has great coverage but falls somewhere in the middle when it comes to speed numbers, but it was among the fastest budget routers I tested on both Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6. The only place where it had issues was down in my basement where it consistently got a one or two meg upload speed. Now, what makes this really odd is that it gave me some great speeds out of my driveway, which is usually an even harder test. Overall, I was really impressed with the results from the Aero, even though it did give me those issues in the basement, considering it does have a Zigbee hub built in and did give me good speeds from other locations. All right, next is the Asus Zen Wi-Fi XD4 3-pack, which retails for 280 bucks, but regularly goes on sale for 250 bucks. So the XD4 is available in either black or white and has a small rounded cube design. Each unit looks identical, except the mesh units have one ethernet port. I really do like the brush finish on top of each unit, which is very similar to its bigger brother, the X-T8. So setting up the Asus was fairly easy, even though it does take a little longer than some of the other systems. I really like the Asus app interface since you can control nearly all of the settings, including advanced settings right from the app. Now, considering the performance I got from the Zen Wi-Fi X-T8 system earlier this year, I was expecting to see really good speeds from this system, and I'd say it did really well. The X-T4 gave me some of the fastest download speeds from 10 feet away, as well as out in my driveway where I got an impressive 194 meg download speed average. I also got great speeds from the mesh wireless unit. The only problem I ran into with the Aces was that it didn't handle me roaming around the house too well. Moving from the kitchen to the basement caused major drops in speeds. Now turning Wi-Fi on and off did seem to fix the issue, but I still think it's worth mentioning. Overall, I still think the Aces is a good unit considering it provided some pretty impressive speeds while still maintaining a low price. And last but not least, with a retail price of 270 bucks is the TP-Link Deco X20. So the X20 is a three-pack AX1800 system that often goes on sale for 250 bucks or less. TP-Link has made a name for itself by making great performing devices at a lower price, and the X20 proves this by being one of the least expensive three-pack systems on the list. It looks pretty much identical to the X60, which I tested earlier this year, and comes with three identical units that have a round tower shape. And unlike some of the other systems in this video, the X20 comes with two ethernet ports on the back of each unit. This allows you to wire the units together for a wire backhaul, or you can use the ports to hardwire multiple devices, which is a pretty big plus. Setting up the TP-Link was super easy and the app is also really intuitive. Just grab one of the units, wire it up, and follow the directions in the Deco app. And the performance from the X20 was great. The speed results were very consistent and I had no issues in any of the testing locations, including both the basement and out in the driveway. Now, even though it did fall somewhere in the middle when it comes to speed, it didn't give me a single dropout unlike some of the others. And considering this is a three pack system, I could easily use one of the additional mesh units and put it closer to one of the trouble locations and get even better speeds. 
Overall, the TP-Link is a great system that produced a nice solid and consistent connection that gave me no problems. All right, so now that we talked about all these units individually, I'll combine all of the results into a few condensed charts. So feel free to pause the video if you wanna take your time reviewing the results. So in the speed test from 10 feet away, the Asus had the edge on download speed slightly outperforming the Linksys on Wi-Fi 6, even though the Linksys did provide much better upload speeds. The Asus also had the fastest Wi-Fi 5 speeds at 10 feet. And at 35 feet, the Netgear actually had the highest average on Wi-Fi 6, with the Asus leading the pack on Wi-Fi 5. And when testing from two rooms away, the Linksys took the lead on Wi-Fi 6, even though the Aero pulled ahead on Wi-Fi 5. In the basement test, the Netgear had the fastest speeds on both Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6, and as I mentioned earlier, the Aero had some issues in this location for some reason, which you can see from the results. And in the torture test out of my driveway, the Asus takes the lead again with 194 meg download speed. Overall, I have to say I was really impressed with all of these systems considering some routers can't give me a signal at all out of my driveway. And finally, the results from the mesh units. So the mesh units were placed about 40 feet away from the main router and one floor up. So most of the units gave very similar results, which is more of a limitation of AX1800, but the Netgear had the fastest download speeds and the Asus had the fastest upload speeds. Now, honestly, I'd say this is nearly a tie. The only thing that really surprised me here was that the Linksys didn't have better speeds considering its coverage and the added benefit of having external antennas. All right, so now that we've gone over the results, let's go over the winners for our categories. So the winner for best value goes to the TP-Link Deco X20. So priced around 250 bucks when it's on sale and 270 bucks when it's not, the Deco is a great value considering it's a three pack system that provides good consistent performance. Unlike some of the other systems like the Asus and the Netgear, I had no issues with dropouts or decreases in speed with this system. Not only that, but it also has the added benefit of two ethernet ports on each unit. Now this may not seem like a big deal, but it gives you much more flexibility if you have multiple wired devices or if you want to wire the units together. All of this makes the Deco X20 the best value system under $300. And the winner for fastest speed goes to the Linksys MR7350. Now I will admit that this was a tough choice between the Asus and the Linksys, but as I mentioned earlier, I did have some issues roaming around the house with the Asus and the Netgear. For some reason, the wireless speeds would just drop drastically when I went from one floor to another. Now, if I had to guess, I'd say this might be attributed to beam forming, so disabling that might fix the issue. Either way, I got great speeds from the Linksys in all testing locations, and it had great coverage with its external antennas and works great as a single router if you don't have a large home. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I really hope this video helped you guys out who were looking for cheaper alternatives to the really expensive mesh units out there. Now, I will be receiving my first Wi-Fi 6E router really soon, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that. I'll also be uploading a few projector reviews really soon, including the BenQ TK700 STI, Hisense L5, and Epson LS300, so stay tuned for those. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.